After making several videos about my experience as a tire drop shipper, I have gotten some very good constructive feedback from some of my viewers and I agree with them. I actually, I feel I have not done a good enough job. And so today I'm here to make things right. I'm here to tell you all the reasons you don't want to become a drop shipper. I'm here to tell you all the bad news, all the bad things, anything that I could think of to hopefully persuade you to just avoid getting into this business because this business is a hard stressful and sometimes even not profitable business like i said i'm normally a very positive person and like all my videos to be positive but this sometimes could create a bit of misconception from some of my viewers that they think wow this guy's over here selling hundred thousand dollars in sales online and this is like easy money and you know because i try to make my videos easy to understand maybe some people are misunderstanding the simplicity of the explanation with the actual simplicity of business itself so in this video i'm going to tell you all the ugly all the bad things all the reasons why you don't want to sell tires online now before we begin please help me by smashing that like button subscribe i've noticed that a large amount of you guys watching right now this video are not subscribed so please help me by subscribing it really helps my video also smash that like button because even though you might think it doesn't matter YouTube knows people who are liking videos and then they push it to other people so that then this video can become more popular and it really helps my channel a lot. Also, thank you Synergy Sage for sponsoring this video, but I'll talk about them more along the video. So now the last thing I want to do is for someone to watch one of my videos, be inspired, start their own online store, spend multiple thousands of dollars in a website development and time and energy, and then for them to realize that this is really not what it looks like, right? So that's why in this video, you're gonna find my tone to be a little bit discouraging, okay? My job really is gonna be to try to discourage you as much as I can to prevent you from stop selling tires online. If you make it through though, my friend, I think you deserve selling tires online. I think you should go for it. And again, that just means that you're ready for the worst storm possible and you will be successful because you know you have that strong mentality, but again, if there's some things here that you're just like, uh, you know what, I'm already dealing with all this in my current business, I'd rather just stay with my current business, then hey, hopefully this video helped you avoid spending thousands of dollars and months of work. So the number one reason you don't wanna sell tires online, it's because it's stressful. Yes, I know you might think, well, what do you mean stressful? You're telling me that you get inventory feeds from all these warehouses, from a system that's fully automated and that you really only have to click a button to process a, a pretty much an order and you make money. Well, yes, but there's a lot of moving pieces. There's moving pieces, which again, I'll address further in this video because they alone are pain points, but just there's, there comes a time where at the end of the day, you're so overwhelmed by all these moving pieces, all these complaints, all these issues that are going on that you, know, you just really have to be prepared mentally that it is a very stressful position to be in. So be ready to have a lot of stress on your shoulders and be ready to solve a lot of problems every day. The second reason you don't wanna sell tires online is simply because of returns. Returns are horrible. Let me put it in perspective. If I sell a tire for $100, I have to spend $20 in shipping, but I'm making, let's say $30 in profit. I pay for the $20, I'm making $10 per tire. Pretty good, 10%, we'll call it a day. Pretty good, I'm happy, right? But Let's say the customer receives the tires, doesn't want it anymore, and returns it. Well, now I have to return this customer his $100. And now I have to pay for the return, which is another $20. So at the end, I got no sell, and I spent $20 to ship a tire and $20 to ship it back. I lost $40. So now how many tires do I have to actually sell now? You know, the next order I get, if that customer doesn't cancel on me, well, again, I only made $10 in profit. That means I have to do four transactions to cover one return. And so this is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, being in the entire online dropshipping business is very unprofitable sometimes because returns just kill you. What I've been doing, and again, uh, this is just more of a tip, is now I will leave in a, my return policy that the customer is responsible for the return expense. So again, if the customer just changed their mind and they just didn't like the tire, then they have to pay for the return cost. And then uh, if they want me to provide labels, I'll normally build them for the shipping that I sent it over to them and the return label. So that way I could at least break even. Uh, but again, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it wasn't their fault and it was someone else's fault, like FedEx or the vendor, the supplier shipped the wrong tire. 
And you can't just go and tell your supplier, hey, well, I'm going to charge you because you shipped the wrong tire. Yeah, you honestly have to bite these bullets and hopefully you have enough cushion to absorb these losses. The third reason you don't want to sell tires online, it's because of Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. And I am going to make a video just about these three channels because they alone are just, um, again, they could be a whole full video of why you don't want to sell on these platforms. But these platforms really have only one goal, and that is to make money from you, right? As a seller, they make their money, they make all the profit, and they take a 0% risk. I had this customer who bought four Michelin, spent $1,200 in tires. He told Amazon that, FedEx didn't deliver his tires, even though I had a valid tracking number from FedEx. After talking with Amazon support, Amazon support just simply returned this guy's money, like $1,200, took it out of my seller account. And then I had to demonstrate to Amazon that FedEx had indeed delivered the tires and that this guy was probably just like stealing them or somebody stole them. And then FedEx didn't want to take care of that. So at the end, I had to pay for that. Amazon is just very good at returning people's money. Which again, as a user, that's great. I love that. But as a seller, it's very hard because again, how many tires, how many orders do I have to sell now in order to get back $1,200 of loss? Now that's one of the problems with these channels. The other problem is the mapping. The mapping of the data is just so incredibly hard. It's like Amazon only allows you to upload products based on ASINs, which is their own unique product identifier number. And then Walmart only uses UPCs. And then eBay is whatever. eBay is actually quite easy. And so you have this warehouse in California here that has a 205-5516 Goodyear Assurance all season, right? For them, the part number is the Goodyear part number, which is right there, right? But then you have warehouse here, number two in New York, let's say. Nothing against New York, just an example. But you have here the warehouse in New York, same tire, Goodyear Assurance all season, but they in their system has the part number as 12345 because the guy inputting the product just didn't know that there's an assigned manufacturer part number. And so when you get all this data, now your website's displaying two Goodyear Assurance all seasons. And this could create problems and you wanna make sure your data is, uh, you know, the data integrity is clean. And so this is just a lot of work, especially when you have to scrub thousands, probably 40 to 50,000 items, uh, making sure they're all mapped correctly. Uh, so it's a lot of work. And again, pushing them to specific channels like eBay, Amazon, and all them, it's just a nightmare. Trust me, it's a big, big, big challenge. It's a big investment in time and resources and having people helping you. And it's uh, their support team. Walmart is horrible. Amazon is really good and fast, but they just use templates and they always respond with the same thing. It seems like it's a robot almost. And eBay, it's like, they really don't care as much. You know, They're, eBay, you're really more on your own. Now, personally, I've spent about 4,000 hours in the data base that we currently have, you know, in, in data integrity, whether it's checking the proper image is mapped, you know, the manufacturer images correctly, tire specs, tire sizes, manufacturer part numbers. So, uh, you know, and we're still probably, I'd say like 85 to 90% of data integrity cleaningness. So, you know, it's still a long process, but, uh, you know, just expect that to be a, a, an important part and a very stressful part of selling tires online. Now, moving to the next reason of why you don't want to sell tires online is chargebacks. And I'm going to group this one with chargebacks and fraud because this is, this can actually kind of be a little bit both. So in summary, you will have a customer that will actually buy the tires and then they will receive them and then they will say that they never really got them because they just want to steal them, right? They just want to take away the tires and then someone else pay for those tires. So what will happen here is that, um, well, now you got to spend time investigating. Now you got to deal with FedEx opening, starting a claim, whether it was them who lost it or whether FedEx did deliver it, whether you're going to put insurance on it. And so that's always a problem in terms of theft. Again, if you're selling on those eBay, Walmart, Amazon platforms, they will just return the money to the, to the customer and it's your loss. So it's actually pretty bad. In terms of chargebacks, which again, I have lost probably more than $10,000 in chargebacks uh, just because of people, again, they will buy tires, they will use a stolen card, or even there will be their own card and then they just report it as they never authorized this expense. I had a person who confirmed that she bought those tires. I had video recording or audio recording in our phone calls. And then suddenly, like some months later, she says she didn't buy them. 
I recorded her again and I sent that to the bank and they still declined my chargeback claim. So I, was, I just give up on chargebacks. Also, another common reason or problem is that FedEx only collects, uh, you know, I guess like a signature or a name, not really even a signature. So whenever I go to Amazon or eBay or the bank, they want a signature, they want a picture. And so FedEx doesn't provide that. And most of the time it causes us to lose on those chargebacks claims. And so what we've been doing now to mitigate that, and again, this is more of a tip, is that we don't process any order that the billing and the shipping address is uh, different. Also, Shopify does a very good job with their fraud analysis. I don't know how they do it with this algorithm, but every time I fulfilled an order that's medium to high risk in terms of chargeback or fraud, um, I get problems. And so now anytime there's a medium or high we just cancel them. We don't want to deal with it because at the end of the day, you're trying to make some money, but you end up losing money. So that's not what we want. The next reason you don't want to sell tires online is because of the vendors, the suppliers. Sometimes they tell you they have these tires and they don't, then you have to cancel the order. Then this affects your metrics on eBay, or you have to buy it somewhere else for a higher cost and just eat the loss. You know, sometimes I've had to loss 200, $300 in one single order simply because I thought one supplier sent me their data feed, said they had them. I tell them, hey, I want these tires. And they say, oh, actually, we don't have them. And again, what do you do in that case? You, you can't just tell them, well, you're fired. You know, you're gone. We're, we're not going to do business with you. You can't yell at them, right? Um, and then with your customer now, again, if you cancel that order, if it's our own online store, we have a lot more flexibility. But if it's eBay, Amazon, all these companies measure how many times you cancel these orders and it really hurts you. Uh, again, I'll tell you why in just a moment. But it really hurts you. So we can't cancel these orders. You know, we have to find a new supplier. We have to pay the new price and we have to fulfill the price. So sometimes we just have to take a loss in the beginning, you know, not even factoring that they could still be subject to returning tires and oh my God, it's just a headache. Another issue with the vendors is that sometimes since they're moving so many volumes, sometimes, you know, and you're moving so many different vendors here, uh, sometimes they charge you twice. Sometimes they charge you for returns, sometimes like uh, return uh, shipping when they should have been in charge of return shipping, uh, things like that, that you really have to pay attention. And so now you need just one person reviewing all these transactions and that adds to your overhead. Or again, if you're going to be doing that, well, now you have to find time out of the day to review all these transactions. And so that's one of the main or biggest headaches with uh, the vendors. Finally, well, I, I did forget one thing about vendors. Uh, also, vendor suppliers are common. Some, some suppliers, it's common to ship the wrong tires, right? So they see the same Goodyear, different size. They, they just grab that first year Goodyear. They thought it was the same Goodyear and they tag it. They ship it to the customer. Ends out it's a different type of Goodyear. Customer is now upset, mad, opens a claim with eBay, Amazon, your store. And it's a big headache and you know it was all because of a little mistake you know mistakes happen but it is still a headache you have to deal with um, and again normally you have to pay for shipping again and it's lost the money dlts or old tires is something that's kind of common you know some customers will get these tires they're really old they don't like them so they'll return them you just lost on returns there so that's one of the problems now the next reason or and i'm going to be summarizing these other uh, reasons a little bit more compact you know just more short but another reason why you don't want to sell tires online is because of karens and lawsuits so karens you will have people who just are extremely obnoxious you know they just demand so much and so little we had this one customer who uh, bought some tires and he canceled his order and of course it takes like two to three days for the funds to go back to his card you know it's not us it's not we're using his money to go to the casino and play it's the bank is just processing all those transactions and so they have that specific customer calls like two to three times that single day and then the next day calling us for his money that he wants his money he wants his money i was like dude you gotta wait and it's like dealing with these type of people it's just sometimes hard but you know you still have to deal with them and then lawsuits for example Toyo, if you're going to be selling tires online, Toyo is very strict when it comes to selling on Amazon, Amazon, Walmart, eBay, you know, some of these companies are very strict about their map pricing, the minimum advertised price. So don't be surprised if you get a letter saying that you're being sued or you're potentially getting sued if you don't remove these listings. And so again, unless you're a multi-million dollar business that could afford to have a full-time lawyer or an attorney, then maybe you could you know, work something out. But in my case, I just don't have time for that. So all that time we spent in putting all those Toyo listings have to go away.
not to mention all these mad customers saying that they're going to sue you because they bought a tire at Walmart for $15 because there was an incorrect mapping price and then you canceled that order and then they're saying that you can't do that because they bought the tire $15 and you have to obey that. And so when you tell them, well, I cancel it and do whatever you want to do, then they say, okay, well, you'll hear from my attorney and I'll sue you for $15. But yes, you got to deal with those clients as well. Another reason why you shouldn't be selling tires online is because of hacks to your website. So normally I use analytics to review pretty much every single day, every hour, how many visitors are coming into my store. But sometimes you just get these very annoying bots that just come and crash your website or come and saturate your traffic. You know, suddenly my average traffic per, per day is roughly 1,200 people. So 1,200 visitors, unique visitors visit my website every single day. And sometimes these bots come and spike it up to 16,000, 20,000, and they stay there for days. I don't know if it's like websites that are just scanning all my items and gathering all my data or something, but it's very annoying because then if I have campaigns, I really can't measure as easily, you know, which campaigns perform very well. I have to go one by one, report more additional uh, reporting as if I already didn't have enough time, you know, they're just giving me more work on top of that. So yeah. That's something to keep in mind as well. The next reason you don't want to sell tires online is because of bad advertising. Advertising costs money. And sometimes you spend money and you get absolutely nothing. For example, I spent about $2,000 on Facebook. Probably my ads were bad. And that's why you need funds to kind of test and trial and error and put the campaign that performs best. But, you know, I spent $2,000, only got like like one order. You know, I, I, I completely lost in, in that whole transaction. Uh, same similar scenario with Google. The one I found really good results was Microsoft Bing, but I think it was because it was uh, just my campaigns were a little bit better in that specific um, platform. But at some point, I was able to get about fifteen dollars return on advertising spent dollar, which means for every dollar I spend, I get fifteen dollars in revenue. Doesn't mean profit. That's something that it's very frustrating and really I wouldn't disencourage you in selling tires online is because you're selling, spending all this money on advertising, but you really don't make money because again, if you spend $1,000 and you make $15,000 in profit, you had 10% markup, you made 1,500. So maybe you're gonna be making about $5,000 in profit or $500 in profit, I mean. But if there was cancellation, if there was this, if there was that, you know, at the end of the day, margins are really, really, really thin. So you really have almost no room for error. And then finally, I'm really gonna leave it at this. The reason, uh, the last reason you don't wanna sell tires online is because of um, all the issues you're going to encounter. Uh, like a lot of issues you're going to encounter. Like we sold some tires that were over 300 pounds. Nobody wanted to ship them. So we had to use a freight company and we have to coordinate with the warehouse picking up those tires. And you know, it's a lot of someone going on the phone call making sure we're calling this guy, making sure we're coordinating this pickup, making sure, you know, customers calling in that someone's helping them and answering their questions and addressing their, their concerns properly. So a lot of training goes into um, building a platform like this, a lot of preparation, a lot of money, you know, um, another reason probably why you don't want to sell tires online is because a website you're looking to spend at least five to ten thousand dollars at least. Um, we're talking about a simple Shopify store that's integratable to vendors. Uh, if you want to go all out and do a more sophisticated system, maybe you could go up to fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. So you know, just keep in mind that it's a lot of money you have to invest, a lot of time you have to invest, and the return is a very long. You're not going to be making money for at least two to three years probably. Uh, unless you do some things, you know, I'm not saying that's all, I'm, I'm not saying that's everyone, I'm just saying that's the trend, right? So in my case, it has worked out well because I have my retail stores and my horse, uh, my wholesale business and other projects I could focus on while my dropshipping business kind of takes off and barely this year it has started to take off. So, you know, just keep that in mind, you know, just be very patient. But if you don't have patience, then you don't want to be selling tires online. But anyways, guys, I do want to address, though, that if you need help answering calls, attending customer service, or any sort of support for your online store business, Synergy Sage is the company to go because that's the company I use. They currently have agents that help my customers address similar questions like these. So by you hiring Synergy Sage, it's really almost like hiring my team to help you with your dropshipping needs uh, in terms of 
customer service, bookkeeping, uh, whatever the case might be, you know, marketing. Uh, so either way, thank you so much energy for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There it is. All the reasons why I really wouldn't recommend you sell tires online. But let me tell you this, if you're still wanting to sell tires after watching this horrible video, um, then again, go for it. I think it's still a good business. I think it's a business for the long term. I think it opens up so many opportunities to sell other items other than just tires. And so, you know, other markets perhaps. And again, just know that it's gonna be a tough road and don't expect to become a millionaire because you, you really are not going to become a millionaire. It's really just going to open those opportunities and give you that experience, hopefully to to take advantage of whatever happens next. Unless maybe, you know, you have already brick and mortar stores and wholesale, then an e-commerce just makes sense to have that full, complete exposure. Right. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of these? What would be other reasons you probably wouldn't suggest others in selling tires online? Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.